Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Walker Rumble Dungeon Guide, I'm going to take a look at Numericon on an Undead Week and this Blood Mage Talnos army that I used to clear a level 24 dungeon. First, let's take a quick look at the Numericon dungeon mechanics. The first boss, Crowd Pummeler, melee and cannon attacks and knock player minis off the platform. And yeah, they do. However, flying minis, when they get knocked off the platform, they can just fly back. When ground minis get knocked off the platform, even in some of these gaps, they're just gone. So the main plan for this one is to take this meeting stone and then start attacking it from both sides. With ranged units, Chimera, I suppose, is the best one. Chimera can just do so many things and it can also recover from being knocked back, but any ranged units really can handle it if you send them from both sides so that the boss can't knock them all down quickly enough. Then there's also these protective devices, Gnomish Harm Prevention Belt, Limited Time Protection, known to attract gnomes if left sitting too long. So these give the minis temporary shield, but also if they're here for a while, then a safe pilot will spawn and from the boss's side and grab them and then start attacking you. So you want to pick these up when you have time to do that, but the main thing is to get this stone and get these attacks from two sides going. The second boss, Electrocution 6000, is the most annoying and most difficult boss in all of the dungeons in this game, because you're just going to be swarmed by so many minis. It has rocket towers, so you can't outrange rocket towers, and these rocket towers also have this kind of mist around them that deals elemental damage to your minis. And nowadays rocket towers are siege damage, which is physical damage, so there's both elemental damage and physical damage coming in, so it's even more difficult to do this. The boss itself deals a whole bunch of elemental damage, so you would kind of want to tank it with something resistant, even a quill bore will do, but also fire elemental used to be pretty sweet when it could also tank the rocket towers, but nowadays it doesn't do that nearly as effectively. So you need something to take the rocket towers, Sappers with rocket boots is the best option. If they don't have rocket boots, then at least one of the sappers is going to die, because slow sappers just are not fast enough to get underneath of the rocket. But rocket boot sappers, even if they're one-on-one -on -one against the tower, they will be able to hit the tower. Gargoyle is another fine one. It's also armored, so it does a pretty good job here. If you don't have rocket boots on your sappers, you probably want to use a gargoyle. Then some kind of resistant armored something tank could also also potentially handle them, but that's more difficult now that there's both damage types in. And once you get both towers, you really have to get some towers here, then you want to attack the boss and use a resistant tank to turn the boss around and then get some then get some damage on it from behind. For example, Chimera can be very strong, but resistant tanks are the key to getting to the boss. And if you win the second map, you have basically won the dungeon, because making a thermal block is not much of a boss. Control switches summon walking bones for big damage. Thermal block has this shield here, so thermal block takes very little damage otherwise, but there will be walking bombs coming over here, or coming over here, depending on who is going to break through these switches. Switches cannot be claimed by flying, so you can claim them with ground troops, and you can claim them with spells. You're just trying to keep minis on both sides of the map at all times, so that whenever these spawn, they, you get to destroy them immediately. So just go back and forth and back and forth, and always send miners whenever possible, because there's plenty of gold here to mine, and it's all very close to your base, and yeah, Thermoblock is just a game of whack-a-mole, basically, and then that's no more gone. For this town's army, I'm using Plague Farmer, Ghoul, Smoke Bomb, Sappers, Safe Pilot, and Whelp Eggs. My first attempts were done with Chimera, but I saw on the community discord that people had been using Whelpex instead of Chimera, so I gave that a try and it also works with Talnos. So on the first boss we have Plague Farmer, that can shoot at the boss from range, so you can take the meeting stone and shoot from boss from two sides, and then you can also just drop Whelpex and save pilots on the boss. On the second boss, you have Goblin Sappers that can take some towers. Sometimes you can even do Sappers and Smoke Bomb them so that they can get there uninterrupted. And then instead of trying to do Chimera and Quillbor like I do in some armies, this time we're just dropping Safe Pilots and Whelp Eggs on top of the boss. Cool can also tank the boss a little bit so that you might get some value from the Plague Farmer. And then the final map, you're just playing your minis, playing your ground-based minis especially, and just playing a game of whack-a-mole, trying to cover the board and break those fats, and that's pretty much it. And this is what this town summit looks like in action. But on some of these maps, I just really wouldn't want any of the spells. I got to be much happier with none of the spells. Nice. 
Nyt. Might send those out there. Yep, we managed to grab the shield before the... At least we managed to grab the shield before the landing, so... That was already something. They got the shields. Everyone has shields. <laughs> that that armored ghoul. The armored ghoul is standing up its ground. I tell you that. We want to send the plague farmers in. There. Okay. No. Talnus just thrown away. Unless I can send a plague bomber. The base can just handle a little bit of damage there, then. Might still be fine. I can stealth the sappers too. Still, Zappers actually reached the boss and consequently died. But hey, let's go again. And get some troops here. Those troops are fine. Those troops will defend. <laughs> I got a bonus bear. As a downside, the bonus bear meant that the rocket boot sappers actually couldn't take the base because the the rocket boot sappers um, the bear got them to become, become a target a little bit faster. So they didn't get to the base. No, 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 no. Don't let them have the tower. That's good, Blake Farmer, right there. These can come in and help too. Ooh, a grunt. I love it when I get a grunt. Free grunt. Who doesn't love free grunts? Oh, but base can handle that attack, right? I actually don't know if it can. I'm losing the chest. I wanted that chest, you know. I truly, truly wanted that chest. Here we go, here we go, here we go again. Just lost the Talmus. Send it out here again. That one over there. No, 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 no. It's too slow with that. But... I guess the Welbecks are the superior way. Alright, 
Let's get this show on the road. Just getting a random mini is actually quite useful, isn't it? Because that means that all of my squads will now have something useful that they can give me. I can drop those Welbex over there and something else is going to spawn too. In this case it was a hobby. <laughs> In this case that was a chicken. But still it was a mini. And a mini can break these things. No, don't let it break that. Oh dear. That's not nice. Be away from the knoll. Well, I got a footman out of that. Like footmen, footmen are fun. More footmen. Strange dust indeed. Strange brew. Kill what's inside of you. Strange brew. Alright, maybe we were strange brewing a bit too hard here, but it's just so hilarious. Strange brew. Oh no, Spawn's coming my way. No, no, no. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.